covered in any depth before, uh, and maybe that we should have done. And we started to get emails saying, we need to have a look at the whole business of electromagnetic pollution, how it's affecting us, how it's affecting the environment, and indeed wildlife, things like bees. And uh, we did a little bit of a search, and uh, we came across the work of Barry. And Barry is very much an expert in these realms. And at the other end of this, you may well, sadly, be having to throw out your wireless broadband. I don't know. But even so, there is an issue here which, which needs serious consideration. And we're really looking forward to hearing here um, maybe some things that we can take into consideration in our day-to-day -day lives. So please give a warm welcome to Barry Trower. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for, for taking the trouble to come here. Uh, I would like to begin just by saying everything I'm going to say now, I have referenced. Uh, I have published a paper going with my talk today. It is free, uh, referenced, and I'm giving a copy to the gentleman who's running this meeting, who would probably charge you the photocopying fee. So it, it is available, should you wish it. I will begin by just telling you where I'm coming from. I trained in 1960 with the government micro warfare, warfare establishment. Uh, I learned all about microwaves, microwave warfare, stealth microwave warfare, and anything else to do with microwaves from the 1960s uh, right through to the 70s I trained. I worked with the Royal Navy underwater bomb disposal unit, which also incorporated microwaves within the, the, the trigger systems. Uh, during the 1970s, a part of my task was to... The Cold War was well underway for those of you of my generation. Uh, you will appreciate the seriousness that we were in during the Cold War uh, between Russia and America. And a part of my work for 11 years was to question captured spies. Uh, microwaves by then uh, had developed into quite sophisticated stealth weapons. And the all important information coming from countries was what microwave weapons do you have, how do they work, what do they do to people. And that is where I gained most of my information. I was uh, the author of the original Tetra report for the Police Federation of England and Wales. I wrote the second report, which was published this January by the PCS Union. I've written several papers on this matter, which, which can be obtained from the internet. And I travel the world now. I work free of charge. I travel the world talking to royalty, leaders of countries, governments, um, answering questions on this very issue. Okay, let's begin. <clears throat> I will say, um, uh, did I say, if I didn't say it, um, I work free of charge, and if there is a fee for speakers, if the gentleman running this would be kind enough to donate it to any local charity in Glastonbury, that would be fine. Thank you. <laughs> Um, now, we often hear in the press that uh, we need to do experiments on mobile phones. All of your mobile phones, Wi-Fi computers, all these clever things, um, all work from microwaves. Now, <clears throat> in 1971, no more experimentation. Oops, if I'd hair, this wouldn't have happened. Um, in 1971, uh, no more experimentation was needed. We do not need experiments to see if mobile phones cause cancers. We do not need experiments to see if they affect children. Um, we certainly don't need any more experiments to do with anything. It was all published in 1971. And a series of documents here, there were 2,300 
research articles published by the United States Naval Medical Research Institutes that were then the leaders of the world, and they listed 120 illnesses. 120 illnesses caused by low-level microwave irradiation, and that is what you have now in your mobile phones. <clears throat> this was reinforced in 1973, again by the United States Defense Intelligence Agency. Uh, these were secret documents. You wouldn't have had access to these, uh, but I did. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is the document from the United States Defense Intelligence Agency in the 70s, and basically what it's saying is that people exposed to low-level microwave irradiation, hence your mobile phone, can, and to sum all of these illnesses up, it's suppression of the immune system and also physical and neurological diseases, because the microwaves can affect brain function as well. Hence the Cold War weapons. Um, they were used on dissident groups, in other words, enemies of the state, to give them cancer and make them sick. And if you can make a dissident group sick so they can't be bothered to fight anymore, you've done your job. Now, you may be wondering, uh, what does all this have to do with the ecosystem? and birds and bees and butterflies and moths and animals like that? Well, the answer is actually quite a lot. Because when you start looking at the cellular systems of all of these little insects and all of these little animals, they are remarkably similar to ours. In fact, when you get down to the nuclear and atomic level of the cells, we are all identical. The only difference is sometimes the number of genes, the number of chromosomes in the nucleus, certainly a few organelles in the cytoplasm, cytoplasm or the cell wall in, in the case of plants. But the actual gubbins that makes us all the same, the, the, the gubbins inside, is actually identical to us. So if you're going to start developing a weapon which affects human beings, then it's also going to start affecting the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom, because we're all the same. <clears throat> and to verify this, you only have to pick up any research paper. Uh, this is a research paper by... Who wrote? This is from the uh, Canadian government and it's called A Potential Threat to Human Health, Microwave Radiation. And when you start looking in all of the... Sorry. When you start looking at all of the uh, references, you start to see that the experiments they have carried out, and this is something I disagree with very intensely, is animal experimentation. Um, of any kind. I wouldn't experiment on a ground sleuth. You know, um, everything, uh, you know, I disagree with experimenting on any single animal, even an insect. Um, you see that the experiments are carried out on birds, chickens, insects. Uh, so, to verify what I'm saying is that the the experiments that are carried out on humans during the, the Cold War, they're also carrying them out on animals as well. And at the end of these experiments, they say, this level of microwave caused this particular type of damage. But sadly, they don't seem to have the forethought, forethought to go one extra sentence. If they were to write at the end of all of these, and some of these papers have hundreds upon hundreds of references, <clears throat> if they add one extra sentence, this can also happen out in the wild. Because the same animals, the same animals and insects and small mammals, 
that they're working on in the laboratories are also out in the wild. And the same microwaves in the laboratories are out in the wild. In fact, the, the, the intensity is higher out in the wild. So if it's going to affect them in the laboratory, it's certainly going to affect them outside. Uh, and what we are now doing is slowly murdering our entire ecosystem of the planet. Now, for the scientists here, I will just give a very brief explanation of how microwaves do actually affect the cellular structure of plants and animals, if the rest of you would bear with me, please. Uh, because the scientists here will be thinking, aha, you clever thing, I know that it's only X-rays and gamma rays that can penetrate a cell and cause genetic damage. Uh, I'm afraid it isn't. <clears throat> um, basically, and I'll sum up pages and pages and pages of uh, <clears throat> research here. Uh, basically, the microwaves tend to change the... Uh, cell potential. When you change the cell potential, then you have your knock-on effect. Cell potential, signal transduction, cell cycle timing, interference to the adenosome, triphosphate, double bond at the mitochondrial deoxyribonucleic acid site, and then it works back. The problem with cell potential as well is that the vibrational frequency of most of these instruments releases calcium. There are lots of experiments that show calcium is released from the surface of cells. That is replaced by potassium. Potassium doesn't have the hold on the cell that the calcium does. And again, the heat shock proteins that are chaperones in cells, they will then again start the trigger to apoptosis or cell death. <clears throat> you also have disruption to the uh, hydrogen, carbon-13, and phosphorus atoms within the cellular structure, the crist uh, uh, calcite crystals. And when you start looking at all this, as I said before, what we're looking at is suppression of the immune system and, in the brain, severe neurological symptoms. And this is what was published in 1971. Now... Those of you who read a lot of science will not disagree that the possibly the most the foremost research paper is Nature, uh, and Nature covered an article on this, showing that. And I will quote: Here we show that oscillating magnetic fields that we get from these phones and transmitters disrupt the migratory orientation behaviour of migratory birds. In other words, the animals, that, the animals that use either the sun or the earth's fields to navigate are now in trouble because the earth's field is magnetic and a part of the microwave radiation coming out from all of these transmitters is magnetic. But the one from the sun, the, the, the one nature here is describing from the sun... <coughs> Uh, and there are a lot of animal species have this mechanism, not just uh, bees. The mechanism from the sun, as the sun comes down, it goes into the eye, it triggers two little atomic particles that go up, and as they come down, they come down... Uh, using vector mathematics at a slightly different angle to the angle they went up. And the brain can detect that angle and it gives the animal the orientation to the sun and the Earth's field. <clears throat> now, I was in Africa uh, just before all this football started. I was in Africa as the guest of several people. And one gentleman took me to a field in Africa, and he said, what do you notice about this field, Barry? And I said, well, it's quiet. Uh, and he said, well, this time of year, on this day, he said, you and I would not be able to hear each other speak. There would be so many bees buzzing around all of these crops. 
He said, and I haven't seen a single one this year. And with a lot of respect to the gentlemen in Africa, they do understand their land because they live of it and they live on it. And he said, since that went up and there was a transmitter and there was another one over there disguised as a tree, but nevertheless, it was a transmitter. He said, since that went up, we haven't seen a single bee. He said, not only that, he said, we have lost our ants. And of course, ants actually have the same remarkable detection system for navigating. Now, bees, I can understand. Ants, you would think, well, okay, isn't, aren't they doing you a favour getting rid of the ants? But in fact, they're not. And the problem is the ants crawl all over the crops and the crops produce some sticky substance that the ants like to lick. But having the ants all over you stops anything else landing on you, like weebles and mealybugs and aphids and black flies and all sorts of things. So once you get rid of the ants, the plants are then invadable. Now, not only have they lost their pollinating insects, but they're also losing the defences of their plants. And these people live off of their plants. They can't nip down the road to Tesco or somewhere and just pick up a few tins. They actually need these plants. And the more the transmitters are going up, the more the country is beginning to suffer. And it's not just uh, the animals I've mentioned. This is very recent. Uh, it's been found that we have this same system. It may be a part of the explanation to do with electrosensitive people, which is recognised all around the world, even treated in some countries. But unfortunately, our government scientists cannot seem to do an experiment that finds it, and so we do not acknowledge it. <clears throat> but um, the rest of the world does. Uh, to, just to prove what, roughly what I'm saying here, um, we have a paper here by two professors and three doctors who say that, uh, in a part of their conclusion here, and I'll quote, the immune system of the animals seems to have collapsed many bees suffering from five to six infections simultaneously. And they go on, technically produced electromagnetic oscillations or waves in the microwave band, which is mobile phones, disturb the natural orientation and navigation mechanism created by evolution. And they go on to the, the navigation system of bees. Now, Basically, what's happening here to the animals is very, very similar to AIDS in humans. And I often hear from the mobile industry who really, really detest me as far as anyone can be detested. I'm at the top of the list, I can assure you. Um, the, they, will, they often say, aha, clever, clever, clever. Microwaves do not kill bees, do not kill animals, do not kill humans. And technically, they are correct. You see, what they will do with humans and animals and bees is suppress the immune system. And it's a bit like AIDS in humans. AIDS does not kill people. AIDS will suppress your immune system. But the very first thing that can then come along and attack you that will kill you. And this is what I am arguing is the same with bees. Their immune systems are suppressed. Once you suppress any animal's immune system, all of the infections it carries, the varroa mites, the other infections, they will then take over. And the bee is found, as these professors have said, with five or six different infections. Again, 
more professors here are writing. This is a professor who is a beekeeper, and he says, the problem only appeared since several transmitters have been installed in the immediate proximity to my hive. Which just confirms what we're saying. And it's not just bees. Uh, when I wrote the Tetra report a few years ago for the Police Federation, um, there was an article <clears throat> where low pulses, microwave and sonar are used under the water and it was pinned down to uh, whales and dolphins uh, and it was affecting, it was argued, their navigation system. And I challenged the minister on behalf of the police. I, I can't think of the reference, but it's in my Tetra report. And I will never forget the reply I had from the minister uh, over this. And he said, it is their fault for being in that part of the ocean. <clears throat> and I thought, well... If that is the level of stupidity we have walking around the higher corridors of Whitehall, then what hope is there for the rest of us? The military have something to answer. Um, questions have been asked in the Russian parliament over these new weapon systems especially from the Americans who have a super microwave weapon which can actually penetrate under the oceans and anywhere around the planet. It's called HAARP, H-A-A-R-P. And papers have been written saying it is affecting bee populations and all other, all other animal populations. Countries are protesting against it, but uh, to, at the moment, the Americans do not seem interested. They are saying, well, it is there to study weather, uh, and that's where it's staying. But we are not alone with our mobile phones if you have one or transmitters. The military have jumped on this, and this is what we are trying to curb back on. <clears throat> one person here, uh, and this is one of three papers I have, have actually plotted where the mobile transmitters have gone and they have also plotted the demise of the bees and the animals following. Uh, one paper that was written and published in the Australasian Journal of Environmental Medicine, uh, they took Estonia, the country Estonia, without any mobile phones, then the phones went in, and then years later they found that eight different types of cancers had risen, the animal populations were suffering, and uh, they also said that for because of the complicated hormone systems that ladies have, uh, which are very necessary and to get disrupted, uh, they said ladies suffer more than men, which also comes out in the epidemiological studies around transmitters uh, for cancers but the animals as well. And this person here plotted the rise of the mobile industry around the world and the demise of bees following it. And interestingly, he's also said that in Brazil, in parts of Brazil, uh, some parts of Brazil have transmitters and there are no bees, and other parts of Brazil have no transmitters and it does have bees. The beekeepers here, there are a few scientific papers. I've referenced them. Uh, I referenced them. Can you, can you hear me okay? Back there, yeah. Um, I was here a couple of years ago speaking at the Glastonbury Festival, and I, I referenced in my paper, which is on the internet, I referenced, I think, 14 studies on bees if you are a beekeeper. Um, here's a scientific paper. This is from the Institute of Physics and published um, in the Institute of Physics, which is a peer-reviewed scientific journal, showing that uh, bees have ferromagnetic materials in their heads, abdomens, uh, 
and thorax, in other words, the head, the body, and the abdomen. And the ferromagnetic material of the bees means that the bee can be magnetized. Now, it is tuned into the Earth's magnetic field, but the, an ordinary straightforward transmitter is 640 times stronger. That's only one, if you've got several transmitters. So a bee is actually, once it starts flying, and other insects as well, they are being remagnetized. And if you are remagnetized, then you will, you will lose your orientation. A mathematical paper, again, it's referenced in my first report from a few years ago, uh, and I feel sorry for the poor bee. Just about everything to do with the bee makes it susceptible to microwave irradiation from mobile phones. Um, the distance between its antenna act like aerials because they're the right distance. Its brain will resonate because it is the right size for an aerial. Even its body um, is the size of an aerial. Um, so bees have absolutely no chance. They will resonate to do with the pulse frequencies of the mobile industry, their earth geomagnetic magnetism is being made uh, inoperable, their navigation from the sun is being made inoperable, so they really have no chance. Okay. And here is the copy of my paper. I was here in 2008. Here is my paper. Uh, and the experiments I've listed, there are 14 references here if anyone is studying bees and needs to find some references. Now, to verify what I'm saying, uh, I, I find it easier to bring the documents and say, I'm not standing here making this up. Um, here is the proof. And... Here it is. This is from a research department. Our data field strengths, thus, our data field strength values for microwave support the notion that long term exposure to high level radiation affects the abundance behavior of house sparrows. This is one big research article. Uh, it is put together and it shows exactly what I've been saying. I mean, animals have the same cellular structure as us. There are no surprises here. And there are 16, 20 pages of 16 peer-reviewed university studies here on cows, cats, dogs, hamsters, whales, birds. And it, it highlights basically suppression of the immune system. And it goes on to bees, bats, butterflies. No surprise there. Um, this is uh, Dennis Henshaw, professor of Bristol University, and he has highlighted in excess of 8,000 research papers to do with microwaves affecting animals. 8,000 in this paper. And he is criticising governments here who say that barely 10% of the research done is ever looked at, and even less it is talked about. It is just brushed aside. Uh, this is in this week's Gardening Weekly, and I just thought I'd throw this in. They have done their own little survey here, and they say that over 250 insects or birds or mammals pollinate our plants. So it, it's quite a lot. It, it's quite a lot to lose. Excuse me being thirsty, but I am a pensioner <laughs> and I'm trying to do my best. Um, <clears throat> right. And here we just have, just to show they exist, <clears throat> um, these are peer-reviewed, in other words, peer-reviewed for the non-scientists, forgive me if you're a non-scientist, when I write a research paper, um, like the last paper I did for the Tetra, uh, I sent it to uh, experts, 
And in this case, it was the, the Public Services, Commercial Services Union, the legal department. Um, they say, we are now going to peer review this. They send the document out to as many scientists as they like. It may be six, it may be 26. They read it and they send it back. If they find no errors, then the paper is fit for publication. If there are errors, they come back to me and they are corrected. <coughs> um, in this case, there was one error and they said, can we change? I put lady police officer. They wanted to change it to female officer. Um, what the difference is, I will never know. But um, I said, you have my permission. But that was it. But that took six months. It, it can take six months to, uh, to 18 months to peer review. So these are peer reviewed documents. Um, and there are 16 peer-reviewed documents here showing that microwaves affect the immune system of plants. I have tried to tell the Forestry Commission and all people connected with plants, they think I'm mad, but look what we've got now. They, because the, the, these big forestry commissions have transmitters now in their lands, as do the National Trust and they are locked into contracts. Um, and I'm trying to say to them, the immune system of your plants are going to be compromised because plants can't just uproot themselves and go for a walk to get away from the radiation. They are there. Um, and we are now, I don't know if it's connected, but we are now suffering from the immune system of oak trees and larch. <clears throat> Whether it's connected, I don't know, but I think it's just the thin end of the wedge, this. Okay, that was through. <clears throat> um, and again, a very recent paper uh, on plants, the death of plants. And these are coming from eminent scientists around the world. I'll whiz through these papers here. They're all on plants and animals. Any farmers here? Uh, this study was done quite a while ago, but it's been updated. Um, they found that if you are a farmer and you have a transmitter in your field, uh, the milk yield is down and the dairy cattle become sick. They moved the cattle away and they recovered. They moved the cattle back, they become sick. Now, this cannot be psychosomatical, as if you live near a transmitter and you say, I'm ill, they will say, well, it's your imagination because there's nothing wrong with these. You know, moo cows do not in sit in fields reading Scientific American. <laughs> you know, they eat grass, and that's it. They moo and they eat grass. Now, if it becomes sick, if you walk them away and they become better, and you move them back, Move. That's a good joke too. I've never heard that. Uh, move them back. Um, you know, it, it stands to reason, and it's still happening. Defects, birth defects in in farmers, uh, in a cattle with farmers with transmitters. There it is in the field. So there are no surprises there. <clears throat> and as many of you don't like them, but even. A big paper here showing that rats suffer, and they actually show it is the hippocampus in rats, which is the behavioural territory. Another paper, peer-reviewed papers again on all different types of birds. And I, I just feel so sorry when I read this. Um, they put a, a transmitter up here, and the swans that were nesting near could do nothing for days but fly around and around and around the transmitters and the people asked them to turn it off and in polite words they said no uh, and the swans could do nothing but fly and fly around until they were exhausted. Uh, how sad is that? Now, <clears throat> I, I'm not going to name drop here and pretend I'm famous because I'm not. Um, I talk to royalty around the world 
Uh, I am the guest of royalty in, in some places, certainly the guest of ministers, and I have spoken to governments uh, for hours at, at times. And sometimes uh, somebody from the royal family or the minister, or sometimes all of them, after the, the talk, they come away, we have a private talk on a table. And when we have a private conversation, um, it always seems to follow the same theme. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what it is here because I think it's interesting. <clears throat> I wish I'd thought this up, uh, but I didn't. I'm not clever enough to think this up. But they know it because it is happening to them. Um, and they say, Barry, I'll, I'll tell you what's happening. They say, let's assume we've got 60 million mobile phones in this country, which, which is, happens to be what we've got in this country, 60 million. So it's a nice round figure. And let's assume the average person is paying one pound per day for their mobile phone bill, just on average. It means that leaving my country... I'm now the king of another country. Leaving my country is £60 million a day going to the four main operators, Japan, America, Netherlands. I get a little bit back in taxes, VAT, ground rent, but most of that £60 million is leaving my country every day. OK? No arguments there. Right. Now, Nature, the magazine Nature, has done an article looking at the total damage to the ecosystems around the world from what I'm talking about here today. And they have estimated that if we lose our food supplies or our food supplies dwindle, the total cost to the planet would be 33 trillion United States dollars. Now, and again, I'm not name dropping. Uh, I was with A King in Africa, uh, sitting like this, having a chat. And I said, well, <coughs> most of your plants in Africa are vitamin C. Vitamin C producing, fruit and vegetable, vitamin C plants. No bees are turning up, which means you are losing your vitamin C in Africa, which means you have to start importing fruit. And you have to start importing medicines to counter off scurvy, which, which is a lack of vitamin C. So not only is the food going up, but you've got the medicines you have to bring in and you have to start importing the food because your country is now having serious financial difficulties. <clears throat> so, and going with that, going with the 33 trillion around the world, and this is coming to us, and, and this isn't a fairy tale, this is now happening. This is happening today. So going with the food prices going up because they have to be imported. And, as I say, part of the 33 trillion, going with that, you have the illness that the microwaves are also causing. Now, the Nobel Prize winning Irish Doctors Association have estimated it may be as much as 12% of a population electrosensitive. In other words, food allergy to microwaves, put in a simple term. Um, there are people, and I may be here now, who, if, if you blindfold them, can tell you if anyone's got a mobile phone on or they're driving down the A38 and they pass a transmitter. We, globally, we know that each country that has done experiments say it is above 3% of the population. That is 2 million people in this country. And it, is, it, it develops into the worst flu you could ever imagine with all sorts of psychological damage. Now, at the moment, it's been estimated in America 
that this and other environmental illnesses, just environmental illnesses, is costing the United States $71.8 billion. So I'm talking to the king here, and he's saying to me, look, I can't afford the people to be off work. I can't afford the food rise. I can't afford all of this money going out every day. And you could go into the a primary school to the bottom maths set, and you could put this on a blackboard, and you could say, tell me what's going to happen to this country, and I guarantee every hand will go up, and they will say, you are going to run out of money, sir. And that is what the king and the ministers and people say to me. We are going to become, as a country, bankrupt and non-viable. And as it happens, this, the countries causing this are also now coming in with the solutions. And of course, there is a price to pay. We want some land. We want this, we want to put up some military bases over there, and we want this and this and this, and we'll make sure that you keep your country. And this is happening today. The other part of this, and I find this a total contradiction, I think it was yesterday, Jeremy Vine, Radio 2, or, or the day before, he was talking about that we are all going to be charged seven pence or eight pence a mile for driving down our motorways uh, to counteract the carbon footprint. Okay. And our cars would be fitted with little gizmos that could be picked up by the mobile phone transmitters and things so they would know exactly where we're driving and, and they could charge us. And this is all to stop the greenhouse effect and knock down the carbon dioxide. Now, I don't know about you, I watch the news quite regularly and read the papers. I have never, ever in my life seen one article about the carbon footprint from the telecommunications industry. And researchers have looked into this and they have now worked out, there are three papers, and they come up with roughly the same figure. It is 110.7 million tonnes of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere every year. And I have heard nothing. Now, that is the equivalent of 29 million cars. 110.7 million tonnes, or is roughly the same as the aviation industry throw out every year from aeroplanes. Now, if the communications industry is the same as the aviation industry, then why haven't we heard? In fact, it goes even further, because what the government are trying to do is make every little village and town and city Wi-Fi, which means hundreds more transmitters. They are putting Wi-Fi into every school, which is hundreds more transmitters. So the paradox I can't get to grips with is while we are being charged seven or eight pence a mile to run down the M5, they are throwing all of this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, counteracting the good that we're doing. In fact, only yesterday when the figures came out, and this may be one of the reasons, the Treasury is actually collecting more in taxes from your mobile phones than the tobacco industry and the alcohol industry combined. <clears throat> few more minutes left. Is there a solution? Yes. There are solutions. <clears throat> the bioinitiative report. International scientists got together a couple of years ago and they studied 2,000 
peer-reviewed and researched papers, and they said, look, if you must have a communications industry, this is the level that we will consider is safe enough not to do any harm to the planet. But it is being absolutely ignored, because if you stick to that level, the industry reduces its profit margin. So the limit is there. In fact, I've got the tables here. <clears throat> the limit is here, which is of these units, 0 0.1, and we are allowing 10,000. Um, and in fact, that 10,000 was, I think, the Labour government, before they left, uh, negotiated to triple that for the industry. And I, I read yesterday that the American Prime Minister, or the American President, has already given the industry permission to double their output in America. Uh, one last thing here. <clears throat> there is a legal instrument, a, a legal judgment or a law from the European Parliament, and it actually says here that, this is a very recent one, damage, any damage to animals, plants, natural habitats or water, the causer will pay the principal. In other words, uh, if you damage birds, animals, plants, the mobile industry will have to pay the damage. That is the easy bit, of course. The hard bit is taking the most powerful industry on the planet to court uh, that also has a government backing. But the law is there, and I'm not going to say them publicly, but I do know one country that is actually trying to take this uh, into court now. Finally, um, I didn't have time to put these in, and I'm right on time. I didn't have time to put these in. Two final papers here which arrived just yesterday. This is from a university in India, uh, Punjab University. They have found the cause which could be the first step in reversing the decline. They have established radiation from mobile phone, uh, a key factor in the phenomenon of bees. So the further confirmation there. And again, this one, uh, another doctor from another university, um, puts it down to pulsed radio frequency radiation from mobile phones, and this one is from America. So what we have um, is, in my mind, an industry and a government that is either, it, it's what I call either blind corruption or intentional ignorance. Uh, they are deciding to choose not to look at what is going on because the money coming in is so vast and the rest of the problem they can deal with some other time. It is either that or, um, as some of the leaders of countries have said to me, could this be a plot to take over my country by stealth? You know, maybe you don't need bombers anymore and invasion armies. If you just surround my country and cover my country with these transmitters and everybody becomes sick and you start coming in with your military bases and your food and your medicines and you start moving in all over my country, is it, you know, could that end up where I don't have a viable population and we share my country? Um, and it, it wasn't so far-fetched when I started looking at who was actually in the country and bringing their stuff in. So there could be two reasons here. It could be corruption. It could be taking over the world. I don't know. I'm not clever enough uh, to, to go through all of this and work it out. But um, it is certainly a viable thought. Uh, the problem is there is nobody to challenge you cannot get to the higher echelons of Whitehall and challenge people on this. You are suppressed. And 
from what I gather from countries around the world, there are one or two very powerful people. Uh, I've got uh, four minutes. Um, there was, I was in one country, and the professor that, that was having dinner with me, he said, do you know, we are an island. He said, no, everything I've mentioned is happening. And he said, one person spoke for the government, never asked the government, one person invited the mobile industry in, said, this is safe, signed the papers, it is now going across unrestricted, and there is nothing we can do about it. This one person had the clout to sign that certificate, and now we are in this mess, and we can't get out of it. So the industry, to me, seemed to pick on people who sign for governments, the people have no say, and then, whoomp, and it's out. Ladies and gentlemen, may I thank you for your courtesy and for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barry Trower. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.